The C2 Proficiency Cambridge English exam, also known as the CPE exam, is of course the highest level of all the Cambridge English exams. It's also the oldest, it's the original uh, Cambridge English exam from 1913. And it's the most prestigious, of course. It's accepted by institutions internationally, and it's designed really for English learners who have achieved a, an extremely high level of English proficiency. And that can sometimes be the problem because the kind of English learners who decide to take the C2 proficiency Cambridge English exam are those who often work in English. Uh, maybe they live in an English speaking country or they have English speaking friends and they use English on a regular basis. So, so they tend to think that they have the level to pass the exam and perhaps they feel that they don't necessarily need to prepare. And as I said, that's a big problem because you do need to prepare for this exam whatever your level is. It's often said that even native English speakers struggle or would struggle with this, this exam if they had to take it, because it's not only about the level of English you have, unfortunately. It's about knowing the format and understanding how to approach each part of the exam. So this video is going to be quite a short video. I'm going to give lots of information and it's really for those of you who perhaps have your C2 proficiency exam coming up soon, and maybe you haven't prepared and you're starting to realize, ah, maybe I should have prepared because this is a tough exam and it's a very big exam. So this is not going to be a tips video. I'm not going to give you tips on all the parts of the exam. I have many other free videos on YouTube, which you can, you can look up. It, I have playlists for the, all, all the Cambridge English exams or the the upper tier of the Cambridge English exams, so the B2 first, C1 advanced, and C2 proficiency. So they will help you. And I also have my online course, which in which I go through all the parts of the exam, uh, giving all my tips and advice on strategy and approach, time management. Um, and we look at the uh, some sample papers and there are some quizzes in that online course too. But if you don't have time to do all of that and you have your exam coming up very soon, then this video is going to give you um, the basic information, kind of an overview of all the parts of the exam. And I will throw in a couple of tips for each part just to help you. So if you're panicking a little bit, hopefully this, this video will make you feel a little bit more at ease. So what is the C2 Proficiency Cambridge English exam? Well, it consists of four papers, the reading and use of English, which are together in one paper, the writing, the listening, and the speaking. So the reading, use of English, the writing, and the listening are always on the same day, they're together. The speaking paper is sometimes on a different day. Um, it could be the day before, the day after, a week before, a week after. That just depends on your examination center and they will give you all the details on that. There is a computer-based version of the exam and a paper-based version of the exam. The content is exactly the same in the exams. The level of difficulty, of course, is the same. There are many advantages to taking the computer-based exam. I made a video on that a few months ago, so I'm not going to go into the details here, but one important thing to, to, to take into consideration is that it's a computer-based exam. It's not an internet, internet exam. It's not a remote exam. You must go to the examination center to take the exam. Cambridge are working on perhaps incorporating more remote versions of the exam in the future, but at the moment you must attend the, the examination center for whether it's the, the computer-based or the paper-based exam. The speaking paper of both exams is exactly the same. You're in a room with an interlocutor and a, an assessor and your partner. So as I said, there are four papers in the C2 proficiency exam and it lasts about four hours. So it's a big long exam. So you really need to stay focused throughout mm -hmm. and you need to know what to do in each part of the exam. So starting with the reading and use of English, uh, this consists of seven parts. So there are seven parts in the reading and use of English. For those of you who have taken maybe the B2 first or C1 advanced before, the format is very similar in the reading and use of English, but there are some important differences. So part one is called the multiple choice close. So this is close, C-L-O-Z-E, which basically means the text contains gaps. And as you can see, it's quite a short text. It's just, it will be two or three paragraphs um, and the paragraphs contain eight gaps, nine if you count the example, there's always an example. And what you have to do, quite self-explanatory, I think, um, just choose the best word. So the word that best fits the gap, best fits the gap. It is possible that more than one word will fit the, the gap grammatically, 
but you have to choose the word which best fits. So logically, uh, grammar, of course, is important. The, the big challenge with this part of the exam is that you'll see the, the options often look like synonyms, that they look, look like words which have the same meaning. So it could be that there's a preposition in the text or there's a, it's a collocation or it's part of a fixed expression. Often it's just you either know it or you don't, to be honest. And that's a big, big part of the C2 proficiency is, is the vocabulary. So I recommend you work on expanding your vocabulary if you have time before you take your exam. And this, is, this part is a real test of that. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned, the reading and use of English paper lasts an hour and a half. So you have 90 minutes to do seven parts. So the time management is extremely important. And this is where a lot of people come unstuck because they decide to dedicate equal time for each of the parts. And they soon realize that that's not a good strategy. The first three parts of the exam, so including this one, should you should spend about five minutes on each part. So five minutes for part one, five mi minutes for part two, and five minutes for part three, 15 minutes more or less in total. Uh, the reason for that is, as you'll see later, you need more time for the last three parts because there's a lot of reading to do and you just they're just more challenging tasks in general. And the next part, so part two, which is called the open close, so again, it looks very similar, right? It's short text with eight gaps, nine including the, the example. But in this case, of course, the big difference is you don't have any options. So you just have to come up with a word that fits the gap. It's always one word, and it's usually a very simple word, a word that you know. The challenge, and it is a very difficult task, the challenge is to identify the word from nothing, right? Because you don't have anything, you don't have words to choose from but you have to use the grammar and vocabulary around the gaps and in the text in general to identify the words. So you, as you can see from the example, but is the answer to the first, the, the, the example, very basic word. That's not the test. They're not testing your vocabulary here. It's the grammar that they're testing and it's the, all the grammar around the gap. So you really need to pay attention to the context. Again, I recommend about five minutes for this part of the exam. You're not going to have much more than that. Part three, again, looks quite similar, right? It's a short text. This is called word formation. Um, so it's a short text, two or three paragraphs. Again, the difference here is that you have some stem words at the end of some of the lines. So again, you have gaps in some of the lines and you need to use the stem word. You need to change the stem word in some way to make it fit, again, grammatically and logically in the gap. You can see from the example, season was the stem word, um, which is a noun, of course, but you need an adjective here. So seasonal is the correct word. So often you need to change the part of speech. You need to identify what part of speech is necessary here uh, for the gap. Sometimes you don't need to change. Maybe you have a, a noun as the stem word, but you need a different noun for the gap. So it's not necessarily changing the part of speech. Uh, you need to change the word in some way, often adding prefixes or suffixes, making a word negative, uh, make, forming a, an adverb. And, and you must check your spelling. Spelling is very important here. If you spell a word incorrectly, you get zero marks. There is only one mark for each correct answer in parts one, two, and three. And then we move on to part four, which is a little bit more... You, you will need a little bit more time for part four. And in this case, you get two marks for each correct answer. Or I should say there are two marks available for each correct answer. You could get one, one, well, you could get zero marks, of course, one mark or two marks, because the, the answers are divided in, into two. So what you have to do here is rewrite the, the, the initial, the original sentence. In fact, I'll show you the example, make it bigger for you so you can see it. You have a, a lead-in sentence here. In this case, do you mind if I wa watch you while you paint? And you have um, the, the keyword, the word given, and then you need to complete the, the response sentence, the second sentence. As you can see here in the rubric, it says so that it has a similar meaning. This word is horrible because it's a bit subjective, isn't it? I mean, who decides whether the meaning of your sentence is similar enough? Well, Cambridge decide that. That's the answer to that question. So you just have to make sure it's similar enough. You must not change the word given, so you must not change objection here. And because you've just probably just done part three, this can be confusing because in part three, 
you had to do exactly that, right? You had to change the word given. You must not change the word given here. And you must use between three and eight words, minimum three, maximum eight words. So the correct answer here is, do you have any objection to my watching you while you paint? While you paint. And you write only the missing words on the separate answer sheet. So you will need more time for this part of the exam. As you can see, there are six questions. I recommend you give yourself about two minutes for each question. So about 12 minutes in total for this part of the exam. You may need less time for some, some questions and more time for others. So maybe you need 30 seconds for number 25, but you need three minutes for number 26. About 12 minutes in total for, for the, this part. So then you have 15 minutes for the first three parts, 12 minutes for part four. That's about 27 minutes. And that will leave you just over an hour for parts five, six, and seven. Okay, so this is the first, really, it's, this is the, the reading task. Parts one, five, six, and seven are considered the reading, and parts two, three, and four are considered use of English. Uh, but this is really where you have to read. As you can see, it's a much longer text, so you will need time to read the text and really absorb what you're reading. So this is called the multiple choice um, reading part. Uh, as you can see, you have six questions and four multiple choice options uh, for the answers. So you have to read the text. I, I always recommend you read the whole text first, then read the questions, read the first question, then go back and look at the paragraph. So the questions come in order of the text. So usually the first question is related to the first paragraph, the second to the second paragraph. Maybe you have to skip a paragraph sometimes. And often the last question is related to the whole text in general. But I do recommend you read the question. Don't read the options yet. Go back and look, look at the, the relevant paragraph. Identify where you think the answer is and then check the options to see if you can find the answer uh, there. It's often about eliminating the incorrect options. So I recommend you spend about 15 minutes on this part of or between 15 and 20 minutes, maximum 20 minutes on this part. But you will need probably more time for part six, which is called the gapped text. So again, a lot to read and a lot to do, and you will need more time for this. So at least 20 minutes for this part of the exam. It's probably the most challenging, the trickiest part of the reading and use of English. Uh, so what do you have to do? Well, you have this text with uh, seven missing paragraphs and you have eight paragraphs to choose from here so of course you have to choose um, the correct paragraph for each gap and there is only one correct paragraph what makes this task much more difficult is that there is an extra paragraph which doesn't fit and cambridge are very good at writing paragraphs which look like they should fit they, they seem that they should fit somewhere but they actually don't fit they don't fit anywhere so you need a lot of time. You need to spend a lot of time getting to know the text and really absorbing what you are reading and looking for clues, clues like pronouns and connectors, parts of speech, um, verb tenses, and just the, the, the whole flow of the, the text, um, the timeline and things like this. And the final part of the reading and use of English is part seven. Again, you have uh, text here, so it's a lot of reading. Um, in this case, there are four texts. It could be four, five, or six texts uh, labeled A, B, C, and D. Um, and you have some sentences here. You have a question and some sentences. And you have to put the, the correct paragraph, the correct section in that relates to each of the sentences. And what you're looking for are synonyms and paraphrasing of words in these sentences to identify in the, the main text. In the C2 proficiency, it's a very difficult exam. So it's often not just simple synonyms. It can be fixed expressions, idiomatic expressions, or just general paraphrasing of the idea that you need to identify. Often it's looking at attitudes and opinions in this part. Okay, so that's the reading and use of English. One more thing I will say about the reading and use of English. There's no obligation to do it in the order that the parts appear in the exam paper. So of course you'll, you'll see part one, then part two, three, four, etc. You don't have to do it in that order. In fact, I recommend you start with part five, part five, six, seven, and then four, three, two, one. 
Some people don't feel comfortable doing that, doing it that way, but I recommend that for, for a number of reasons, which I explain more in other videos and in my online course. Uh, but trust me, that's probably the best way to do it. Okay, moving on to the writing part now. So there are two parts in the writing paper uh, and you have an hour and a half, so 90 minutes in total to do them both. So really time management is very important. Again, uh, I always recommend 45 minutes for each part. So this is part one of the writing paper. It's the essay. This is compulsory. This is, you must write an essay. You don't have any other options for part one. I'll quickly show you part two before we look in, in more detail at the essay. So part two, you do have options. You will have five different options. So we'll look at that in a moment. But with part one, you must write an essay of 240 to 280 words, again, in about 45 minutes. And the task is always the same. You will have two texts, two short texts on, a, on the same topic or a similar topic by two different authors. And you must write an essay summarizing and evaluating the key points from both texts. Use your own words throughout as far as possible and include your own ideas in your answers. Okay, so again, there's a lot to think about here, a lot to take into consideration. This is not the video for that, but I will say that you must manage your time very well. You need to plan your essay before you start writing. The examiners are really looking for a range of vocabulary, a range of grammatical structures, um, good organization, good punctuation, also the communicative achievement, how you communicate your ideas, that you understand how to write an essay, the conventions of essay writing, and you must use an appropriate register, so a relatively formal register. Okay, part two, as I said, you'll have options. This is just one example. The first three questions you have, um, you don't know what they will be on, uh, but there will be either an article, a review, a letter, or a report. So three of four. So in this example, there is no report option. In your exam, maybe there will be a report option and no letter option, for example, or maybe there will be a report option and no review option. So three of the four options will appear and you can choose which one you want to answer. Again, thinking about an appropriate register, an appropriate style and following the conventions of the task. Again, this is not the place to go into detail um, about that, but you will have seen that there are a couple of other options here, you know, part 5A and 5B, where this is the set text option. So this is from an old exam. These books are not relevant now, but you have the option of reading one or two of the set text books before the exam, and then you can choose one of these options. So you read the book first, and then you have a question on the book. And again, it will the question, the task will either be an article, a report, a letter, or a review, or maybe an essay. So it's possible in the C2 proficiency that you may write two essays. Uh, two things I should say about this. The current book options for 2023, when I'm making this video, are uh, Us by David Nichols and Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. They will be the options until the end of 2023. From 2024 onwards, the set text option will be removed from the C2 proficiency exam. So if you're planning on taking your exam in 2024 or any time in the future, you will not have this option. I will just mention that the word length is a little bit longer for part two, 280 to 320 words. Some people may choose to dedicate more time to part two of the writing, but I think it's, it gets complicated if you dedicate 50 minutes to one part and 40 minutes to another. I think it's just easier to organize your time if you spend uh, 45 minutes on each task. Okay, so that's a very quick overview of the writing paper. Um, next, we have the listening paper. Now, the good news about the listening paper is you don't have to worry about time management, really, because you just have to follow the audio. Uh, so you don't you can't really manage anything because you're just listening to what uh, to the audio as it comes, of course. Uh, so there are four parts to the listening. We have the uh, two multiple choice parts. Part one is multiple choice. Part two is sentence completion. Part three is another multiple choice. And part four is multiple matching. Okay, so this is what part one looks like. Uh, you have three extracts, as you can see, 
Uh, and there are two questions, two multiple choice questions in each extract. Important thing to say in all of the listening parts, you will hear the audio twice. So that's very important. Um, so you will hear extract one. Uh, so it's here in this case, it's a man talking about a new project being launched in a group. So it's just one person speaking. You will hear it once and then you'll hear extract one again. Then you will hear extract two. In this case, it's part of an interview. So it's more than one person speaking. And then you will hear extract two again. And then, of course, you'll hear extract three twice too. So it's really about focusing um, because, again, you can't, you, you just, it's happening in real time. You can't listen more than twice. You really need to take advantage of both opportunities to listen. You can't disconnect even for a split second in all of the listening paper. So it's really listening for detail. Uh, so you only have three options here. So this is the, you know, Later, the, the other multiple choice task has four options. So this is slightly less demanding, but it's still a very difficult task. In the C2 proficiency, uh, a big difference with um, between that and the C C1 advanced is that there are more accents. So you'll hear some maybe Scottish accents, American accents, um, and the people speak more naturally, generally. It's, it's a more natural, um, fluent speech than the other, the B2 first or the C1 advanced. So it, that's quite a big challenge. Part two, this is sentence completion. So this is where you'll listen to one person speaking. So it's just one person speaking. Um, and you will have some time, by the way, I didn't mention before the audio starts to read the, the text uh, for both for all of the parts. So you'll have a few seconds, not much time, but some seconds to read the text before the audio starts. And that's very important for part two because you need to read and absorb the, the sentences uh, because you have to complete the gaps with what you hear. So this is a mistake that people often make. They often write synonyms or they, they write alternative words to what they hear. No, the paraphrasing and the synonyms are found in the sentences, the, word around, the words around the gap. What you have to write in the gaps are the exact words. So there'll be a short phrase, a word, one word or just a short phrase, usually one, two or three words, and you have to write exactly what you hear. So it's tricky, um, but you must stay focused at all times, of course, really listen for the details and use the words that you have in the text to help you identify when the answer is coming. You may think, well, I haven't heard the answer because now he's talking about this and I've missed it. Be patient. Maybe you have to wait 30 seconds before the answer to number nine comes up, for example. And then maybe number nine and 10, 11 come very quickly. It's about staying focused and paying attention at all times. Then we have the multiple choice where you only have five questions. Um, and in, in the listening, it's always one mark for each question. Uh, but this is tricky. Again, it, it could be, uh, it's usually an interview with one or two people. So it's, it's, often a radio program or some kind of discussion. The, the answers come in order. You will hear the answer to number 16 before number 17. And you're really look, using the, the words in the questions and the options to identify the answer. Again, it's a lot of synonyms, but this is C2 proficiency. So they're not basic synonyms. They're usually more advanced or complicated. And the last part of the, the listening is the multiple matching. So this is generally what most students find the most difficult part of the listening paper because it's multi multitasking really you have to it's you do two tasks at the same time in the c2 proficiency so again you will have time to read the the information read the task um, what i recommend is you identify and don't forget the, the task so for example here task one for questions 21 to 25 choose from the list what each speaker did during their gap year Keep that in mind at all times. So you have eight options here, but only five speakers. So three of the options are irrelevant. But again, Cambridge are very good at distracting you and leading you to believe that an incorrect answer is the correct answer. But at the same time, you need to be listening to for the information in task two. In this case, which benefit of having a gap year each speaker mentions? Again, you have four, eight options, but only five speakers. So you need to stay focused. It's a difficult task. Practice makes perfect. If you have time, there are lots of sample tasks on YouTube. Um, and again, in my, my online course, I go into a lot more detail of how to approach this part of the exam. So again, it's very challenging. Another thing to take into consideration, 
Of course, when you're doing the listening paper, it, you're coming to the end of the main part of the exam. You will be tired. You will be losing focus. But you really just have to make a big effort to get to the end um, of this part of the exam. Because then maybe you'll have the the speaking in a in, on the same day, maybe later that same day. There will be a break. There is a break between each paper and a longer break before the speaking. As I said earlier, you may have the speaking on a different day. There are advantages and disadvantages to, to that. Uh, but what do you have to do in the speaking? Well, there are four parts to the speaking. It only lasts about 15 or 16 minutes, so it's going to pass very quickly. But it's your opportunity to really demonstrate your level, your speaking level. So the four parts. The first part is called the interview. It's like a warm up, really, where you get three, usually three questions, um, personal questions. The first question now, which changed re very recently, the first question will be, where do you live? It used to be, until recently, where are you from? Now it's, where do you live? I think it's a better question, actually. And um, you don't need to give a very long answer, just a short answer, but not just, you know, don't just say Spain or, or Italy. You say maybe perhaps the city or town you live and give a little bit of extra information, expand a little maybe some adjectives, some nice adjectives to describe your, your town or your area. So that's part uh, the first question. The second question will be, are you working or studying at the moment? So you can prepare some kind of an answer. You want to sound natural and fluent. This is C2 proficiency. That's a big part of it. The examiners want to, to hear a natural answer, not robotic or, or prepared by heart. Try to sound natural. The third question in part one, you don't know what it will be. You can't prepare for it. Uh, but again, it will be a per personal question, not too challenging, not too personal either. Um, just again, try to answer it naturally. And in part one, the you will just be addressing the interlocutor. You do not speak to your partner. In the speaking paper, you will have one partner or maybe two partners. You either do it in pairs or groups of three. Usually it's two in a, in a pair, but... Sometimes you'll, you'll be in a group of three, so you need to be prepared for that. But part one, you only address the, the interlocutor. So as I said earlier, you will have an interlocutor and an assessor in the room. So two examiners in the room. You only speak to the interlocutor. The interlocutor um, is the only examiner who uh, addresses the questions to you. The assessor is just taking notes, so you don't have to worry about him or her. Okay, part two is the collaborative task. And that's where you have to do two tasks, actually, within one part. You have to do them together with your partner or partners. It's a collaborative task. It's a very important word, collaborate. You must collaborate. Um, so this is where you have to look at some pictures. You have some pictures as stimuli to, to talk about the two tasks. Okay, so this is a typical example. In this case, there are four pictures. Usually you will find three, four, or five pictures. In the vast majority of the, the sample papers, I've seen three, four, or five, but it's possible you, you may only get one picture. It's anything from one, minimum one, up to seven pictures, but usually, as I said, three, four, or five. So there are two tasks, as I said. The first task is a one-minute task. Uh, the interlocutor will ask you a question, and you must answer the question with your partner. It's one minute is very little time, of course. So it's really just to get get warmed up looking at the pictures. Sometimes the task, the question can be very tricky, but it's important to interact with your partner. So don't speak for too long. Obviously, if you only have one minute, don't speak for more than 30 seconds before you include your partner. Then they will say, now look at all of the pictures. Then you'll have a task where you, you talk together with your partner about the pictures. There will be a little bit of information on the paper. So in this case, for example, TV documentary work, working in the food industry. So the, the task will be related to that. So you must really pay attention. The instructions are quite long, so you must really pay attention to what the task is. You will have three minutes to complete this task. Again, interacting with your partner passing the ball, the, the metaphorical ball, regularly, keeping your contribution short. And then uh, the last part of this task is to take some kind of decision together. So you may have to choose one of the pictures or maybe choose another issue to, to refer to for the TV documentary. So again, really pay attention to the task and make sure you complete the task. Uh, then we move on to part three, which is the the long term. The first part of part three is the long term. And in this case, you get a card like this with 
a question on it. And all you have to do is answer the question on your own. And you have two minutes to do this. So I highly recommend you, you take full advantage of the two minutes. So as I said, all you have to do is speak for two minutes on your own while you answer this task. There are some ideas on the card for you to use if you like, but there is no obligation to use them. In fact, I recommend you, you don't use those tasks, uh, those ideas until you need them. Maybe you will need them uh, because you run out of your own ideas, but I recommend you just stay in the zone and speak for two minutes about the, the task. Okay, when you finish, there will be a question for your partner and then another question for you, which will be, do you agree? What do you think? And how about you? So you must pay attention. And then the last task, the last part of the, the speaking paper is a discussion. So you must discuss some questions with your partner. This is the best part of the exam. It lasts about four minutes and it, the questions are related to part three, or sorry, related to the long term. This is still part three. Um, and yeah, you just have a nice, hopefully a nice interaction with your partner um, until the end of the exam, basically. And that will be the end. That will be hopefully, the, unless you had the speaking paper on another, another day, that will be the end of the exam. And then you can relax and, and just wait for your results. Hopefully everything has gone well. Okay, hopefully you found that useful. There's a lot of information. If you need to go back and, and read and, and watch the, the information again, I've put timestamps so you can go back to the specific part that you find more useful or that you need more advice and help with. Um, good luck with your exam. I hope it goes well. And the links to my courses you, you'll find in the description to this video.